Welcome to the 2022 K-State Garden Hour webinar series. This is, if this is your first time with us, welcome. If you're a regular, welcome back, and we are happy to have you joining us. This webinar series began in the spring of 2020, with much, and with much success, we've had over 34,000 garden enthusiasts just like you join us. This is the last webinar for our 2022 series. We are excited to announce we will continue K-State Garden Hour into 2023. Uh, we have some brand new presentations lined up, and we invite everyone to sign up for the 2023 series. Uh, please be sure to sign up as you won't automatically be carried over to next year. Our moderator will send the registration link over the chat. This webinar is hosted by Kansas State Research and Extension. My name is Anthony Reardon. I am the horticulture uh, extension agent for the West Plains Extension District in Finney and Scott Counties. Everyone involved in the development of this series is an extension professional for K-State. Most of us have a background in horticultural education or a related discipline, but most of all, uh, we each have a love for educating and sharing important gardening topics. Before we get started, we do have a couple of housekeeping notes to cover. Please use the Q&A feature for questions related to the presentation. This is where we will look for questions during the Q&A session. You should see a button along the bottom tab that says Q&A. Uh, just click on that and you will be able to answer your question that way. Our moderators, moderators today are Lynn Loffery and Cassie Thiessen. Uh, they will be sharing information through the chat during the presentation. They will also help us facilitate the Q&A portion of the webinar. Today's webinar will be recorded and we will post it to our K-State Garden Hour website. We typically upload additional resources related to each topic as well. If we share links through the chat, uh, we will also link them on the website. Our website is also where you will have access to previous topics and where you can sign up for the 2023 K-State Garden Hour webinar series. <clears throat> Today's topic is accessible gardening for all. I am pleased to introduce our speaker today, Calla Edwards. She is the Butler County Horticultural Extension agent. Calla literally grew up in a greenhouse, which helped fuel her passion for horticulture that continues today. In her spare time, she loves to garden and care for her houseplants. She has been a part of our team here at KSRE since September of 2021. Please give us a few moments while we transition and share the presentation slides. All right, everyone. I am excited to have you all here today. Um, so this is a topic that is kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, as Anthony said, I literally grew up in a greenhouse. My parents owned and operated a garden center uh, from when I was born, before I was born, until I was a freshman in high school. So we spent a lot of time learning about different tools, different tricks, um, and mom and dad were always really looking for ways to help their customers and help their friends continue gardening. Because we all know that gardening has so many positive benefits, both mental, emotional, and physical. Um, and growing up, my grandparents also always had big gardens. And so as I watched them transition through the seasons of life, um, from being very active and out gardening um, to now they're in their 90s and can't garden as much, um, we've really been searching for some ways and looking for tips and ways to help them continue to be active and garden. Um, and as, as we continue on, um, my parents are both getting older. Mom has arthritis. So uh, we've looked at another area of enabling gardening for all. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today, um, you most people can find something that will be helpful for them, whether you have a limitation in the garden or not. Um, and as I look through those poll screens, it did look like um, almost 90% of us have some issue with gardening or have um, some limitation that causes some pain or issues when gardening. Um, and it appeared that arthritis, um, knee problems, and mobility were the three big ones that you guys um, were seeing issues with. So we'll talk about those as we go along today. Um, I did want to take a minute and thank everyone who answered those surveys that we sent out a couple months ago. Um, we had a lot of people that shared some great information that actually helped to shape some of this presentation today through some information that you provided with us. Uh, so if you do get those surveys, do please take the time to fill those out because we get a lot of great information and we do use that to help plan future garden hours. But for today, um, our topics of the day 
we are going to talk about what accessible gardening is. Um, it's a term that gets thrown out a lot, but um, it's not something that people have a clear idea of what it actually is. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we're also going to talk about ergonomics and the importance they have when gardening. Um, I know we think of ergonomics with chairs in the office, with office furniture and different things, um, but ergonomics plays a really big role in the gardening um, and helping to keep us safe when we're out gardening. Um, everyone's favorite, we are going to talk about some tools. Um, some of these are recommended by agri-ability groups. Um, and some of the tools we're going to talk about are ones that my family has used and has had some great success with. Um, alternative gardening options. Uh, this was one of the topics that came out of those survey questions. Uh, so we're going to touch on some of those alternative gardening options. Um, not able to go really, really in depth with those simply because that could be an entire garden hour of itself. Um, but we will touch on the basics of those. Um, we're also going to hit on gardening with arthritis. That was another one of those topics that came out of the survey that people were really interested in some information about. And then we're going to finish up today talking about some tips, some modifications, um, and just some general recommendations to help you continue to garden and continue to live your best life outdoors with your plants. So the first question I get a lot is, what is accessible gardening? Is it just for people with wheelchairs? Is it just for people who have um, site issues? And in reality, accessible gardening truly is matching how you garden with how and what you can do. Um, so ultimately, you are designing your garden to fit you. So it's going to be different for everyone. Um, for those of you that have limited sight or sight issues, uh, your garden will likely include lots of bright colored flowers that are easy to see, um, fountains and wind chimes for noise so that you can kind of locate where you are in the garden. Um, it could include uh, tags with braille so that you can read or large tags so you can read. Um, if you have mobility issues, those smooth, wide paths to help you move around your garden, um, really designing your garden, how it's going to work for you. And one thing I think is important, uh, there are some simple changes that most of us can make that can have a really big Im impact. And I know in our family, we had to go through quite a bit of trial and error to find out what worked for us. Um, and I know friends that have had disabilities or limitations have also said the same thing. Um, this isn't going to necessarily be a quick fix, but lots of trial and error, finding what works for you. Because what works for me, what works for my mom is not necessarily going to work for everybody. So ergonomics. Uh, like I said, ergonomics has been kind of a, a hot topic. We hear it a lot in offices to prevent um, carpal tunnel and other things, but ergonomics plays a really big role actually in gardening. Um, and the, the goal of ergonomics is to help people complete a task safely and efficiently while using the least amount of energy. And our goal really is to avoid those long-term injuries. Um, many times we see we have repetitive motions, repetitive actions, and those can cause injuries long term. We might not see it the next day, but we might see it five or 10 years from now. Um, so our goal is to use ergonomics to help prevent some of those injuries and allow us to do our tasks as pain free as possible. Um, so our goal is to mass the, match the physical demands of the task that you are doing with your capabilities and in some way find a way to modify that so that you can do that task. Um, typically people think of ergonomics, they're thinking of tools. Um, this set of tools in the picture uh, is probably one of the first set of ergonomic tools that made it on the market. They have this half moon kind of rounded shape to their handle. Um, they have a larger kind of uh, non-slip grip handle. Um, and the whole design of this is aimed at keeping your wrist straight to prevent injuries to your wrist. When working in the garden, um, 
another key thing is to keep your back straight. Um, that prevent, we, we all have a tendency when we're out, if we're kneeling or if we're standing, we have a tendency to round our spine and that can lead to some lower back injuries and lower back issues. Um, so when you're working in the garden, no matter what your limitation is, one of the goals should be to keep your back as straight as possible. And one way that we can do that is using long handled tools. Um, while the, the shorter handled tools may seem easier to work with, they typically are a little lighter, they don't take up as much room. Um, using long handled tools, so I'm talking a tool that's at least your height or slightly taller, is going to help provide some extra leverage. You're not going to have to use as much effort and energy to do the same task. And it's also going to help you stand up and keep your back straight so you aren't potentially causing back issues. Um, if you are working on the ground, if you're in a kneeling position, it's also recommended that you kneel on one knee and have one knee on the ground and one knee up in the air or off to the side. Um, when you kneel with both knees on the ground, we have a tendency to round our spine when we bend over. Um, and kneeling with one knee on the ground uh, is going to save one knee so we can switch off and on when one of our legs gets tired. The other one, and I know um, knee issues was one of the major issue, major problems that people listed in the poll. Um, and we'll talk about some things to help save those knees later on. Um, but we've always heard you lift with your legs and not with your back. Ergonomically, we also want to bend with our knees and use those larger muscles of our legs as opposed to our back whenever we're lifting or whenever we're bending over. Now, if you're like me, I don't like to have a ton of different types of tools. Um, they get really expensive if you have to buy a lot of them after a while. Um, so if you can stick with one type of tool, buying those long handled tools is going to be key. And you can adapt those to when you're working on the ground um, by using a triangle piece of wood to help support the long end of the tool and provide some leverage. Uh, that's going to take a lot of the weight off of you. Um, those long handle tools, you can also purchase handles or make handles um, that you can move up and down on that longer handle um, to, to provide so you can shorten the handle if you are working on the ground. Um, but there's some tips to look at when you're picking the tools, because if, if an ergonomic tool causes you pain when using it, it is not ergonomic for you, even if it might be sold as an ergonomic tool. Um, so whenever you're looking to purchase something new or, or to modify something you have, um, if it's causing you pain, it's not doing what it needs to be doing. So when you're looking at picking a tool, find one that has a grip that fits your hand. Uh, so if you take your fingers or take your hand and you put your first finger on the end of your thumb and make that circle, um, that is approximately the size of grip that will fit your hand. Um, so a bigger grip is easier to hold. Um, with arthritis, the bigger grip doesn't put as much pressure on your joints. Um, so try and find a grip that is that size. Uh, we'll talk about in the tips and modifications some ways to adjust some of the tools you already have to fit if they are not the right size for your hands. Um, using tools with long handles, uh, like I said, those are going to be a key. Uh, something that is lightweight but sturdy. Um, it doesn't matter if it's long handled. Um, if you can't pick it up, it's not going to work for you. Um, something that I have found actually has worked and has been kind of surprising to me. Um, when you're looking at tools, don't just look in the, the adult section. There are a lot of really nice tools in the kids section. Um, many of them have telescoping handles or handles that you can modify to make longer, but those are really lightweight and they're designed to hold up under kids playing. Um, so in looking at tools, consider looking in the kids section because those smaller tools can be really helpful in a garden setting. And then always look at tools that have the soft or non-slip grips. 
they're easier to hold. Um, I often find myself, my hands get wet or muddy, um, and then it's hard to hold on to some of those wooden handles. So the non-slip grips are really helpful. Uh, the picture on this particular page, this is a, a different type of ergonomic tool. Um, this one has the support around the forearm. So if you have issues with wrist and hand strength, um, that yellow piece towards the top, um, that's going to help provide some extra strength. We're, we're relying on the forearm muscle as opposed to just relying on the hand. Um, and then this handle down towards the end um, also has that ergonomics of keeping your wrist straight. Uh, so this is another option for ergonomic type tools. Assistive technology um, and tools. I titled the slide this way. Um, there's several uh, pages or websites that are going to be listed in the chat, and some of them list the tools as an assistive technology. Um, so if you go to those websites and you see that, recognize that that is kind of the tools and modifications section. Um, so tools or assistive technology is any device that helps you complete a task. Um, that could be a tool, that could be um, a special modification to a pathway, um, really anything that helps you complete the task that you are wanting to do. Um, now, one of the keys is you need to pick the right tool for the task because um, it, it won't do you any good to purchase an ergonomic tool if, if you're trying to use it to do the wrong thing. Um, so key thing is to pick the right tool for the task. Um, also, something that, that a lot of people don't think about, shovels, pruners, even hand trowels after repeated use um, especially in heavy clay soils or if you're dealing with a lot of rock. Um, we have a lot of limestone here in the Flint Hills area of Kansas. Um, all of those things dull the ends of those tools. Uh, if you can get them sharpened or if you can find somebody to sharpen them, um, it saves a lot of energy. It's amazing how much easier it is to dig a, a hole or to dig um, and dig in your garden or to prune a plant when those tools are sharpened versus when they are dull. Um, and also always keep your tools in good condition. They're gonna last longer. Um, so make sure your handles are clean, make sure you've cleaned the rust and the dirt off them after you've used them. Um, ergonomic tools, we hit on those earlier, but the goal is to keep the body in a neutral position with your back and your spine straight. Um, and then always remember cushion handles or cushioned gloves help reduce vibration. Um, for individuals that have uh, hand issues or arthritis issues, um, look for cushion handles or cushion gloves when you're purchasing new equipment. Uh, so tools continued. Um, there has been a lot of new tools that have hit the market and the prices have been coming down uh, fairly well over the last few years. Um, but there's been a lot of battery operated tools or tools that can go on um, corded or cordless battery operated drills. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, long bits that have been created for planting bulbs. You could use those to plant smaller plants in the garden, um, all without having to bend over or use a shovel. Um, again, those have been getting more uh, reasonable price-wise in the last couple of years. Um, so if you do have hand or arthritis issues, you may consider looking at some of those battery operated tools. Uh, one of my master gardeners actually showed me uh, this set of pruners in this picture um, when we were out doing a pruning demonstration in her orchard. Um, and I, I immediately went and bought a pair for my dad and for my mom um, because these battery operated pruners are really nice. Um, they save your hands. You, you aren't having to cut um, because the battery does all the work. So if you have a lot of trees and shrubs, or if you do some pruning, um, those pruners are relatively reasonable um, and easy to find. I will do a word of caution. Um, once you pull that trigger, it's going to cut whatever is in the blade. Uh, so make sure that your fingers are clear before you actually pull the trigger. Um, Self-coiling hoses. Uh, when they first came out, I wasn't really fond of them, uh, but 
they have a lot of great uses if you have some mobility issues, um, because we all know dragging a heavy hose full of water, dragging hoses uh, can be a trip hazard uh, and it can be exhausting. Uh, so self-coiling hoses or the ones that expand when you turn the water on and then contract, uh, those can be a great option if you have some mobility issues and you're worried about tripping over hoses when you're pulling them out or moving with them. Uh, they also tend to be pretty lightweight when compared to traditional hoses, uh, so those are some great options. Uh, if you're not comfortable going to the battery-operated pruners, they make a ratcheting type. Um, those ratcheting pruners and loppers where you squeeze, uh, it ratchets and starts to cut, and then you can let off. It can The ratchet keeps the pressure, and then you keep squeezing until the branch or whatever you're trying to do is cut. Um, so again, those are an excellent option for people who have some issues with their hands. Um, Two-wheeled wheelbarrows. Growing up, I always used the regular wheelbarrow. Um, Mom and dad always did as well. And I can't tell you how many times we tipped those things over. And then they purchased one of those two-wheeled wheelbarrows. And it was amazing. Um, they're far easier to push. They are better balanced. They don't tip over like your typical wheelbarrow. Um, so those two-wheeled wheelbarrows or even those foldable carts, um, they're made out of cloth. They're kind of like a wagon, uh, so they don't take up near as much room. Uh, using those to move tools, use produce, um, and just move things around the garden, um, those can help uh, with mobility issues and then also just to save you on steps. Um, I know with arthritis, uh, sometimes my mom struggles with seeding, um, with planting the seeds and getting them in the ground um, in an even strip or where there's not big clumps. Uh, the, the fine motor skills sometimes are a bit of a struggle. And these seeders that automatically um, dump the seed, you can set them for different types and sizes of seeds. Um, those can help if you do struggle with fine motor skills. Um, and I also, I love, I tried seed tape this year with my carrots and it was awesome. I didn't have to go back and do that fine detail work of pulling the extra carrot seeds up because inevitably there's always a clump of seeds that come out. I, you may be able to evenly spread your seeds out, uh, but I have obviously never mastered that. Um, so those seed tapes are an easy way to plant your seeds. You can make them or you can purchase them commercially. Um, both are available. I know knee issues. Um, we had quite a few of you that mentioned that you have some knee issues. Um, garden stools or a kneeler. Um, so the garden stools can be almost anything. Um, the kneelers can be as simple as those inexpensive foam pads or they make some really great kneelers that can either be a stool or a kneeling pad. Um, they have sides on them. I have a picture I'll point out later on, um, but those are great if you have issues getting off the ground, um, but also have knee issues. Sprinklers, I know in the gardening world, um, we always say don't water overhead, uh, but if you have mobility issues, um, Using a sprinkler or a soaker hose instead of watering by hand uh, saves a lot of time, saves a lot of energy, and a lot of steps. Because um, you can put those sprinklers out in the garden where you need them, uh, leave the hose attached to them, and then all you have to do is hook the hose up to the, the hydrant or um, hook the hose up to your soaker hose, and you don't have to use as much time and energy watering. Uh, similar to those kneelers, uh, knee pads, if you don't want to move a stool or if you don't want to move those foam pads around, uh, there are cushion knee pads uh, that you attach to your knees um, and they take them off whenever you're done. Um, the knee pads can help save your knees as you're moving around. And then one of these modifications that I talked about, um, if you already have tools, um, and you don't want to go out and buy new ones, but you're struggling with the hard grip, it's not non-slip, um, and your, your tools are hurting your hands after you're done, 
there's a couple modifications you can do to the tools you already have. Um, most hardware stores sell those, the insulation that's designed to go around pipes. Um, it's typically round, there's an adhesive in the middle, um, and you can purchase that and wrap it around tool handles that you already have to make the grips bigger um, and to make them more cushioned. Or if you can't find that insulation that fits with your tool, uh, purchasing the foam weather stripping, it comes um, anything in from a quarter of an inch all the way up to an inch, I think, um, depending on where you purchase it. But it comes in long rolls. It has adhesive on the back. Uh, you can wrap that weather stripping around the handles of your tools to give some extra grip and to get the handle to the size that's going to fit your hand. Um, those are two really simple modifications that can add some cushion um, that are really inexpensive. So al our alternative gardening methods. Um, I'm touching on container gardening because that is probably one of the most popular. Um, we do have an excellent container gardening webinar, Garden Hour, that was done uh, just a year or so ago. And the link to that is should be going in the chat. Um, so I'm just going to touch on it. But for more information, you can watch that Garden Hour. Um, so container gardening uses pots and planters. Um, pots and planters can be as expensive or as inexpensive as you want. Um, Usually they need to be a minimum of at least six to eight inches deep. Uh, that gives enough depth for the roots to grow. Uh, if you are growing a root crop, your depth needs to be one to two inches longer than the length of the crop you're growing. So one to two inches longer than the length of the carrot or radish or turnip that you are growing to allow that extra taproot space underneath. Um, some of my actual favorite containers for container gardening are the mineral lick tubs that I get from some of the cattle producers in our area. Um, I get those for free. They're big enough to grow any vegetable I want to grow in them. Um, and my cost is simply that the soil to fill them. Um, but in your containers, you can grow any vegetable, basically any vegetable you would like you can grow in a container. Uh, the gardening industry has done a wonderful job of developing vegetable varieties that are specific to grow in containers um, because there is such a high demand for it. Uh, so you may have to do a little bit of searching. You, may, you probably can't grow your favorite sweet corn in a container, but there is a patio sweet corn that does wonderfully. Um, never use regular garden soil in your containers. Um, it will simply turn to a rock when it dries out. Um, my recommendation is to use a third pasteurized soil so you know you aren't getting weed seeds, you aren't getting insects and diseases. Um, then a third compost for nutrients uh, and water holding capacity, and then that third potting soil again for the water holding capacity. And to both of those help to keep your, um, your pasteurized soil from turning into a rock. And then make sure that you provide adequate amounts of light. Um, leaf crops need four to six hours of light minimum. Uh, more is always better. Uh, any fruiting varieties need a minimum of six hours. Uh, eight hours really is the preferred minimum. Uh, they will gross fruit at six hours, but they may be stretched and leggy. Uh, and again, before you fill your container up, make sure it has drainage holes. And also make sure it's where you want it to be. Because once you fill up one of these tubs with soil and water it in, it gets really heavy from personal experience. Um, so if container gardens don't work, um, if bending over really is a big issue for you, consider using hanging baskets. Um, it takes the bending out of the equation. They don't take up quite as much room. You are a little limited in what you can grow because you are limited in your varieties, uh, but there's a lot of herbs that you can grow in hanging baskets. There's tomatoes and there's some mini pepper varieties that would do well in those, um, lettuce and some other leafy crops. Um, but you can hang those on shepherd's hooks out in your yard, um, hang them off of your back porch. I've also seen some people who developed a, a system with their clothesline 
um, and they had a, a pulley system so they could pull those uh, hanging baskets close to the their porch to water them and then put them back out in the sun. Um, but hanging baskets are an option. Raised beds are probably one of the tried and true things. Um, that's what a lot of people move to. Um, a raised bed in actuality can be anything that is above the natural ground level. Um, so it can be four inches above the ground all the way up to uh, a, a raised bed that's four feet tall and deep. Um, and then even the containers that are up on, on legs so that they get them up to be waist height. Uh, with raised beds, we always say a maximum of four feet across. That gives you plenty of space to grow things, um, but you also, most people can reach two feet in from either side, so then you can reach all the way across. Now, if you are put in a wheelchair, um, you may want to look at three feet across instead of four, um, depending on how you build those raised beds. Um, and with these, you can use a mix of compost and, and topsoil um, or that pasteurized soil to fill those up. Um, one of my favorites and probably one of the, the lesser known alternative gardening methods is lasagna or no-till gardening. I really like this particular type of gardening method because it really reduces the amount of weeds that you have in your garden. Um, and you can modify this if you want to till your garden. Um, I don't, but you can modify it and till your garden up in the spring or at the end of the year. Um, but ultimately what you are doing is you are covering your ground with either cardboard or a mulch layer so that no light gets to the soil that reduces your weed seeds. Weeds need light to germinate. Um, because the soil is covered at all times, you don't have to water as much. You're not losing as much water through evaporation. Um, so ultimately covering the ground with mulch means you have less labor and less work. Um, and with fewer weeds, you don't have to get up and down on your hands and knees. Gardening with arthritis. Um, this was another the other topic that came out of those survey questions. Um, about 24% of all Americans in the United States suffer from some form of arthritis. Uh, and there's a wide variety of different types, but arthritis is probably one of the bigger issues that most gardeners will face in their lifetime. Um, so we have some tips and recommendations for gardening with arthritis. Um, some of these are again, um, tips that I've gotten from my mom with her hands and her hand issues. Um, the first one was probably the hardest for her to learn. And that was to break her chores into smaller jobs. Um, so often we, we only have a, a limited amount of time to go out in the garden and we think we need to get everything done all at once. When in reality, it's best to break those chores into smaller chunks. Um, today I'm going to go and weed the carrots because those are what really need it right now. Um, the tomatoes need weeded, but they can stand to wait for a day or two, um, and give myself a break. Uh, something else that people don't think about gardening is rated as a medium to high impact form of exercise. And most people don't consider that when we're going out and working in the garden. Um, so one of the tips with arthritis or with any gardener is to do some stretching before you get out and garden. Um, just some simple stretches to warm the muscles up and kind of ease into the gardening practice. Um, then do some stretching when you're done, um, just to make sure that your muscles aren't getting very tight. Uh, if you take a break in the middle, say you've been kneeling for a really long time, um, kind of stretch and shake those legs out so that you can kind of work through those, those stiff muscles after being in that position for an extended period of time. Uh, I mentioned it during the ergonomic tools, but those long handled tools with easy grip handles are going to be one of the keys for people with arthritis. Um, bigger handles, less pressure on those joints. Uh, take frequent breaks. Um, this is another one that was hard for both my grandparents and my parents. Um, they're used to just being able to go out and do it all at once. And 
Um, so learning to take those breaks, you know, maybe take a five minute break every half an hour or every 20 minutes, um, whatever you need. That's, that's not taking it easy. Um, that's taking care of you and taking care of your body. Um, if your knees or arthritis in your knees is a big issue, um, consider switching to containers or raised beds. Um, again, you can, you can do both of those relatively inexpensively. Um, several studies have found actually that digging in the dirt with your hands, um, especially when the soil is warm, um, has some pain relieving properties. It helps reduce the pain in the joints. Um, the feel of the dirt uh, also helps reduce the pain. Um, when you are wearing gloves, um, so digging in the dirt with your bare hands is helpful. Wearing gloves is also helpful. Um, the gloves, that heat, extra warmth that they provide, especially when it's cool or cold outside, um, wearing those gloves um, helps protect your joints and keep them warm. Um, if arthritis is a big problem, maybe wear two pairs of gloves, one bigger than the other, or take some of that weather stripping that I talked about earlier and put it on the inside of your gloves to add some extra cushion and extra padding um, to those areas where you need it. All right, so some tips and modifications. Um, if you have limited mobility, uh, one of the ways that you can um, continue to garden um, or one of the things to think about is to find a way to reduce your distance between your garden and your storage um, re and reduce the distance really between your garden and your house whenever possible. Um, so some ways you can do that, they make uh, put a plastic tote in your garden that has the tools that you use all the time, your trowel, um, your, your, maybe your kneelers, things like that. So you don't have to go those extra few steps to the garden shed. Um, if mobility really is a problem, uh, look at using a cart or a mobility scooter. One of the key things is also going to be um, in your garden, make sure that you have smooth walkways. Um, so if you do work up your soil if after you've tilled it, um, use either a rake or something to make the pathway that you are going to walk on a regular basis. Um, make that as smooth and flat as possible. Uh, maybe put some cardboard or some mulch down uh, so that that area also isn't as muddy um, whenever you have to walk on it. Uh, I know knee pain was a big one. Um, there's a variety of different things you can do. Um, one of them is to use a knee brace, which could come from your doctor, or it could be one that you pick up over the counter. Um, that will help provide some warmth for one um, around your knee, much like gloves do for hands with arthritis. Um, but it's also going to support those joints so that further damage isn't caused. And then use that stool or chair in the garden. Um, so you aren't getting down on your hand, down on your knees and putting that extra pressure. Uh, if you tire quickly, um, take breaks every 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, and with anyone, when you can work early in your garden in the morning, um, or if you like, if you take an afternoon nap, I know my dad likes to take an afternoon nap now that he's retired. Um, working out in the garden right after you've woken up from that nap, uh, when you're rested, when you have your most energy, um, that's going to help you be able to get more done in a short period of time. And then alternate between those difficult and easy tasks. So um, those really either the, the fine motor skills tasks or if you have to dig a lot of holes, um, you know, dig a couple holes and then go water a plant and then go back and dig holes um, when you've had a little bit of time to regain some energy. Um, those are all some tips to if you fatigue easily. Uh, this is that kneeler stool I was talking about earlier. Um, when it's set up this way, you can sit on it um, or in the picture down below, the, the gal is using it as a kneeler. And then those sides can help you stand up when you, if you do need some assistance when you're standing up. Um, but if you have trouble getting off the ground, using a stool or chair like this um, can be very helpful. 
Um, raised bed gardens are going to be a big one. Um, and then those extended reach tools. So the really long handles um, or getting some of those pincher tools to help pick things up off the ground. Um, those extended reach tools are going to be big. Um, again, like we said in the, the arthritis stretch before and after gardening, um, break your tasks into those smaller segments. You don't have to do it all at once. Uh, have seeding in the garden. You know, we recommend that you take breaks periodically. Um, so having a stool like this or a bench or even a lawn chair uh, where you can just have a place close by to sit and take that five minute break. Um, always try and have some water possibly there so you can stay hydrated in the garden. Um, it's very easy to, to get dehydrated if you're working out in the garden, especially when it's hot. Um, this is one that I actually uh, just recommended to my mom this weekend. Um, replace the round handle on your water spigot with a lever handle instead. Um, so if you have arthritis issues, sometimes that turning motion can be painful. Um, so cut that motion out and replace it with a lever that's easier for you to turn and open. Um, that is a, a relatively inexpensive option or an inexpensive way to change out a task. Uh, and then again, like with that no-till gardening, use mulch to cut down on your weeding. Um, that's going to put less work on you, less labor, um, and then not as much of that up and down motion getting up and down off the ground. Uh, final thing of tips and modifications, um, bring the garden to you, uh, especially if you have limited mobility um, or a limited range of motion. Any task is going to be easier if you can get the task to um, be about waist level, where you can keep those arms and hands between your shoulders and your waist. Um, so that may mean container, container gardening, that may mean raised beds, um, or even hanging baskets. Uh, something else to think about, push and pull your tools with the palms of your hands. Um, the palm of your hand and your forearm are a much bigger, stronger muscle than your fingers. Um, so using that palm and the forearm to provide the power behind digging, behind using those tools, uh, is going to save you some energy and, and potentially some finger pain in your arthritis with your fingers in the long run. Um, similar to breaking up your tasks, um, avoid tasks that require gripping for extended periods of time. So uh, do something that involves gripping a shovel for a while and then switch to a different task. Um, again, to reduce those that chance of pain and inflammation or long-term carpal tunnel damage, uh, from doing a repetitive task. And then finally, um, set up your tasks to avoid backtracking. So uh, try and make your tasks in a linear fashion. Try and have all of your tools with you, whether that's in a cart or an apron or a bucket, so you aren't having to make a lot of trips back and forth. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, for my grandparents had the really big garden um, then they transitioned to some raised bed gardening. Um, and finally, now they're doing some containers. Um, one, one of my grandmas is just doing lettuce and tomatoes on her patio because um, that's, that's all that she can do now. But it, it still lets her get out and nurture some plants and grow some of her own vegetables. So um, I know those resources are in the chat, but these are uh, the main resources that I use putting together this program. Um, the top one, that National Agri-Ability Toolbox, that is um, made by a national organization. Um, a lot of my pictures for this presentation came from that website, and they have um, almost every gardening tool that is designed to be ergonomic or modification that you could think of. Um, so that is a wonderful source for you to, to look at if you're looking for a modification or if you're looking for a tool. Um, that Green Thumbs Healthy Joints uh, by the University of West Virginia. Um, their gardener group put together a great series of articles on modifications, gardening with arthritis, um, all the different types of alternative gardening methods. Um, so that is another wonderful resource. 
Uh, the North Carolina State University has a great resource on ergonomic tools. Um, that AgriAbility group uh, with the toolbox also did some wonderful information on gardening with arthritis. Um, and then the University of Maine Accessibility Gardening um, website, they have a lot of resources and some different articles and tools. So um, I'm going to leave these up. I know that they are in the chat, but if there are any questions, I will do my best to answer them now. Kala, can you, by show of your hand in front of the camera, can you remind everybody again, how do you determine the handle diameter? So you, um, to figure your handle diameter, you put the tip of your first finger on the tip of your thumb and that diameter, that circle that is made, um, that is approximately the size of grip that you need for your tools. Next question, how do you weed without gripping? <laughs> um, so I didn't put all the tools up there. There are some uh, tools that have been made. Um, I have one at home that has kind of a, a long handle with a rotary on the ground. Um, it has a, a various teeth that I run between the rows of my vegetables. And that kind of works up the ground and it, it pulls up those small weeds. Um, but weeding without gripping, um, if you have, if they're bigger weeds, uh, those tools that are used to pick up trash, um, would potentially be an issue or an option. Um, but your best bet to not have to grip your weeds is to cover your ground with some form of mulch so that you don't have many weeds to begin with. Another question on trying to reduce tilling. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about lasagna gardening? It's kind of outside the scope of this, but maybe yeah. not. Sure. Um, so lasagna gardening, um, I did it in North Dakota. And then I, when I lived there and I also am doing it now. Um, so if you have a current garden bed, um, lasagna gardening is really easy to do. Um, I went to the recycling center and I picked up a, a bunch of cardboard boxes that I then laid flat in the garden um, and watered them down and pinned them down because we live in Kansas and there's wind. Um, and I'm currently working on covering them with the shredded leaves from my garden. Um, and then I, I never work that garden back up again. I just continuously replenish the mulch layer on top as it breaks down. Um, and then when, in the spring, when I go to plant, I pull the mulch away from where I'm planting, say, a tomato, and then push the mulch back. Uh, if I'm planting a row crop, I make a line in the mulch down to the dirt, um, plant my seeds like I traditionally would, and then once they come up, I push the mulch back around those plants so that there's uh, no light hitting the dirt around that area. Um, and the, the Green Thumbs Healthy Joints has a wonderful publication on lasagna gardening specifically that has some more information. Um, or if you want more information on that, my contact information is on the screen and I'd be happy to provide some more information. Another question, how do you feel about synthetic weed mat to keep weeds out? I liked it when I used it in North Dakota. Um, my yard in North Dakota was uh, brome and bindweed. And I found that the synthetic weed mat um, was really helpful to keep those weeds down. Um, I do think you need to cover the area around the plants with some alternative mulch. Um, I would make sure though that I buy a high quality weed mat. Um, I've purchased some before that lasted half of a gardening season and then it was gone. Um, so a, a professional grade weed mat, I think is a wonderful option for people who are looking to cut down on their weeding. I think that's it. All right, everyone. Um, if there's any more questions, we can answer them, but thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Cal. Yeah, we typically have more questions than we have time for, but we will be sure to link uh, to several articles related to this session on our website. We hope these resources will help you to answer your questions. Uh, once again, thank you for joining our K-State Garden Hour series hosted by K-State Research and Extension. We are so glad you all could be here today to learn about accessible gardening for all. We are all excited for our upcoming K-State Garden Hour presentations in 2023. Uh, please be sure to visit the K-State Garden Hour website to see all of the upcoming topics and register for the new year. This session, uh, excuse me, this session will be recorded and posted on the website by tomorrow afternoon. After this web webinar ends today, you will receive a prompt to take an evaluation survey. Please fill this out. We would greatly appreciate your feedback. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at gardenhour at ksu.edu. Thank you again. We hope you continue to tune in on the first Wednesday of each month. Have a great week.